Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 4, Episode 11 Thoughts. This episode is called Wake Up. Another episode I love. Spoilers for everything MCU leading up to and including this episode, but not for anything that came out after this episode first premiered. Let's dive right in. So, yeah, we start five days ago and see the... Yeah. Uh, the, you know, the time leading up to May being replaced... I like Radcliffe's, you know, oh, I don't, that's not a happy word. I don't like those words either. And, the, you know, oh, I mean, you'll need me to get access. It's never been a problem for me. And, yeah, he activates Sunset Protocol. And, yeah, the, the memory upload thing is, is very clever. That's how she still knows about... You know, because she knew things that had been said very recently. And this thing of, you know, what's, what was the line? What's the, what's the neural something or other? They take her out, you know, copy over the memories, you know, the new May comes, you know, yeah, wakes up. There's a lot of waking up in this episode. And, you know, immediately asks, what's the neural something or other? And, yeah, um, super creepy with the loops that May keeps finding herself in. You know, first we see, you know, we'd already been told. We were told last episode that this is, you know, this first attempt at keeping her sedated. You know, the program didn't work because it was too soothing for someone like May, who is not a very... You know, she, yeah, she needs a fight. And, yeah, this thing of, you know, the the guy walks in and, and you know, talks about a facial, talks about a mis massage. She tries leaving through the door. She tries saying no. She, like, attacks, like, all these different things. And just, yeah, very, very nicely done. And it's one of those things where, like, from a technical standpoint, it wasn't actually super difficult. It's one small location, and they just film each little bit, and the editing, you know, yeah, really makes it makes it work. And Ada asks, why is the original Melinda May still alive? It's just like, oh my god. Radcliffe, you have got to get her homicidal urges under control. This is This is a very un unappealing pattern here. This is deeply unnerving, is the word I was going for. And, and you know, she's like, well, what does it mean to sacrifice one for the life of millions? You know, just, yeah. And, yeah, they mention, you know, you're referring to the second LMD. Very nicely done. And then, like, for the rest of the episode, we keep trying to figure out who it is, and everyone is, like, saying and doing things that are just slightly, like, odd, like, hmm, what they really, you know, but by the end, we, we realize Radcliffe was the second LMD, you know, so it wasn't any of the people we thought it was, and, yeah, you know, at the end of the day, the things that the, you know, the character said and did, yeah, okay, it felt a little off, but there's still, like, it still works within, you know, no, that character did actually say that. This doesn't seem like you. It doesn't seem like you either. And, yeah, it's, you know, they're doing, it's it's the thing, 1982. This is not the first time the show has done that, but they're doing a really great job. You know, I, I guess it's the second time they've done, you know, both of these are really excellent. So, yeah, I'm not complaining. I quite enjoy the very honest, you know, discussion of policy, you know, the, the General Talbot just really lays out how dirty politics are, and yeah, then it seems like May is, is waking up, but we realize later it's just, it's the framework. I'm glad the Turtle Man came out. That, that's named for you, not for... We could come up with a name for... 
just, yeah. And yeah, um, she says, your insides are great, which is a very, like, yeah, that kind of, I, yeah, I guess it's like ESL, maybe, because it's, a, you know, it kind of sounds like something that, it's close to a compliment, but it sounds like something a robot, like, there's probably AI that would say, you know, if, yeah, if, if you tell them, write, you know, I need, like, a compliment, say something about her inner beauty or something, it's, oh, your insides are great, you know, because it's just, uh, no, that, that sounds like you're saying that he has nice guts, or, like, ni nice entrails or something, that's not really, it's, yeah, and, you know, he says, you don't seem real, <laughs> so just, yeah, very nicely done. And then he's, like, hiding something, you know. Yeah, it's very, very nicely done. And, yeah, El Maydi goes to, to talk to Fitz about Ada, and, you know, she asks, did she know? Could she have stopped herself? You know, because, you know, obviously she's not actually trying to find out if Ada could have. She's trying to find out, can I? Because I'm like Ada. Just very, very nicely done. You know, because it is that thing, you know, she says, Radcliffe spells out later, yeah, it's your program. You can't tell people even now that you know. You know, and that was also, we saw that she didn't tell Daisy because that's the thing, you know. Yeah, that was programming. Not gonna lie, I think if I thought I was a robot, I might try to tell people I trust. It's not like Daisy can't keep a secret. You know, Daisy has helped people going outside of the system before. She did it extremely recently, you know, but something is compelling me to not come out and say it. And, let's see. Yeah, and, and May accidentally cuts her own hand with the glass Yeesh. and you know maybe that's part of the program maybe that's them trying to dissuade her from it but it's also the kind of thing of yeah you know if you've got broken glass in your hand you might cut your own hand and some blood goes on the floor but Ada is called away just in time to not see it it's pretty funny seeing Jeff, seeing Mace ignored by Coulson and Talbot because you know at this point he doesn't have any power. He used it used to be oh you can't ignore him. He's the director you know but now that's the the he's the uh, what do they what do they call it again? He's the the figurehead you know he doesn't have actual power so he's getting ignored. Very very cool fights between May and Ada. And it's, it's, again, one of those, because, like, May has more and better training, but Ada is stronger, you know, so, <clears throat> yeah, it's a it's an interesting matchup. And, you know, near the end, of, yeah, once she reaches the end of the framework, you know, she manages to kick Ada out of the, you know, and I figure Ada, and... LMD probably weighs roughly the same as a person because that's the kind of thing that could really easily give you away if not. You know, let's say that she weighs like a ton or something. Elevators, planes, you know, those are gonna cause problems and you know today there are materials that are very durable that are also very light. And let's see, then we have the um, yeah, Daisy and Mace talk about truth, talk about putting on an act, and she snipes a little with the, you know, he's like, you're good with the truth, and she's like, how are you? <laughs> it's like, I mean, at the end of the day, he did still come out, you know, yeah, reveal the truth to Coulson without having to, and, but, you know, she's been hurt by people who lied before, so 
you can understand where she's coming from. And yeah, they, they want to swear Daisy in, and I just want her to go, bleep, yes, I swear. And <laughs> Elena speaks Spanish, not realizing that Colton understands. He's like, I don't know about annoying him. You're annoying me. And, you know, not long after, he's like, you know, no one likes a smart ass, and she's like, not my experience. And yeah, um, Gemma tries to offer Fitz that she'll, she's there if he needs to talk. Quite good scene, and yeah, holy crap. Ellen Nadir's questions are just brutal. Really love the, the point about, you know, the hate crime, that they're more often the victim, not the perpetrator. You know, this is true of various minorities, and it's something that not enough people realize. You know, they just hear about, you know, oh, this one person who is a minority did something bad, and they assume, oh, it must be all of them, you know, and then the news doesn't report enough on all of the times that they're the targets, the victims. And, yeah, they, they start to put up the, the little things for geometric scans, perhaps for geometric go growth. <laughs> that still remains one of, the, one of the dumbest lines in a fairly dumb movie. The, the second Universal Soldier, second, whatever, the, the Universal Soldier of the Return. And, yeah, and Ellen says, they are still breaking the law. And it's like, oh, no. And, yeah, the, you know, very clever to, to have this, like, thing to, to knock out um, Elena because, you know, Colson, at the end of the day, you point a gun at him and wave a badge, he's going to give himself up, but Elena might, you know, zip around and take their guns. <laughs> that does not look like a fun conversation. No conversation with that woman is fun. And, yeah, they realize there must be a leak, which, of course, turns out to be Ada working for Radcliffe. And the, let's see, or I guess was May, yeah, yeah, May was part of the briefing, I guess it's her and she just doesn't realize that the, the data is being accessed and transmitted, yeah, and yeah, we see the framework, and yeah, goes back to the start, not again, very clever, that's, that's not real Ada saying, you know, I can't believe I dropped this thing again. That's framework Ada saying, really, may beat it again already. Okay, run the simulation again. I'm sure we'll get her eventually. And, yeah, Gemma confronts Fitz and, you know, saying it's an obsession and he insists it's an investigation and not long after, they they arrest Radcliffe, and you know Simmons says he had you know Fitz had a theory, you know very very nicely done. Be between those two, yeah, he you know he explained his theory, and then they, you know, yeah, Gemma listened because, you know, it it looks like she's gonna be the annoying girlfriend trope, the mis this misogynistic trope. Of, you know, oh, women just don't listen. But no, you know, now that, yeah, she's going to going to listen to him because women often do listen. You know, they're, they're often much better listeners than men are, than we men are. And let's see, you know, we have the, um, yeah, May confronts. Radcliffe, and he explains about the programming, and, and, yeah, you know, when they come to arrest, you know, I think it's Fitz, who's like, May, what are you doing here? And she's like, you know, I, I had a hunch, and I went to check it out, and the truth came out. You know, again, she doesn't say, I am an LMD. You know, Radcliffe 
this is not, we're not stopping Radcliffe. This is just, yeah. And, yeah, Mac explains the truth about, you know, who he was going to see. And, yeah, you know, really heartbreaking story about his, his daughter, Hope. And, yeah, we come to understand, you know, he didn't want to lay this all on her. You know, they're, they're dating. This is, you know, if they were, like, married, if they, if they had a much longer relationship, you know, this kind of thing is, is something you share. But, you know, he doesn't want to just trauma dump. And, yeah, Radcliffe explains, I want to preserve life. I am a life preserver. And, yeah, Fitz, uh, can I borrow that? And, you know, goes and, and shoots. And, yeah, for, you know, for a second, it's like, what is it? And, oh, he, you know, Rad, this is an LMD of Radcliffe. And, yeah, this is a sure way to test it, you know. And, I yeah, Fitz was very sure about his theory, evidently. And, yeah, we see that the the real Radcliffe is with Ellen and you know he's told I won't be the one protecting you you'll have to meet the superior which means hopefully that we the viewer will also soon meet the superior can't wait and yeah you know the new framework for May is putting her back in Bahrain she saved the girl. You know, the call to Andrew was to, to, to you know, yeah, to, to tell him that. Just, yeah, really, really heartbreaking. And I'm to be trivia for this episode. Uh, Nadir's office was in the Stamford wing in the Marvel Comics, a battle between superpowered individuals at Stamford, Connecticut. Caused deaths of hundreds of bystanders was the flashpoint for the Superhero Registration Act, which precipitated, precipitated the Civil War, pitting heroes against heroes. And... Let's see. Yeah, the... the <clears> hmm. <throat> yeah, some some great lines from this episode in the memorable quotes section. Today wasn't great. Cauliflower isn't great. Today was a kick in the balls. Keep calling me reactive, Phil. Half the time I'm reacting to the steaming part pile of fart battles you hand me. With Nadir and her staff in the meeting, we have an opportunity. What opportunity? I wasn't briefed on any opportunity. While Nadir's in with Daisy, Yo-Yo and I will get into her office and plant surveillance. We can finally keep an eye on her, figure out her next move. What? No, no, no. There'll be no planting, no eyeing, no yo-yoing. And, yeah. Uh, let's see. I might be able to do an episode tomorrow. If not, next one will be Tuesday. This is politics, Phil. That means politicians. They are a festering cesspool of toxic waste fires. You swim in those waters, you could get pulled under. <laughs>